Hawaii hammered. The Cougars had Norm Chow Main for dinner and sent the Warriors home hungry. Signal call of our quarterbacks will it be young Taysom Hill or restless Riley. And West Coast welcome. The Cougars are looking to kick conference play off on the right foot. I'm Sean Gordon. And I'm Taylor Lansford. Round up those Aggies. It's time for the two. For state supremacy mm -hmm. and eight o'clock cannot come soon enough. It for cannot me. come fast enough, but it's going to be a battle of defense too, as um, Utah's 11 in the country and B BYU is fifth in the country for defense. But it was last week's game against Hawaii that had the offense and the defense. They worked over Hawaii after two straight losses. BYU had an opportunity to get back in the win column and ran with the chance. Taysom Hill got a start in the place of injured Riley Nelson and led the Cougars down the field on the open opening drive for a touchdown from freshman Jamal Williams, who took a leading role after Michael Lisa left with a broken forearm. Hill found a receiver Ross Apo wide open for Apo's first touchdown of the season, and the route was on. The highlight of the night was Taysom Hill outrunning the entire Warriors defense on a QB keeper and sprinting 68 yards for a touchdown. Preston Hadley recorded a sack and a fumble as the Cougar defense forced three turnovers on the night and notched a 47-0 shutout of Hawaii. After the past two weeks, um, I thought there was significant improvement, especially just in ball security and clean play and moving the football offensively and generating points. It was a positive thing for our program and we needed it, especially offensively, to, to see some success and hopefully um, those will continue to show as we move forward. Looking at the offensive numbers from the past two games, we can see marked improvement from the Cougars. 17-year-old sensation Jamal Williams had only one touch in Boise, but carried the load against Hawaii, leading BYU to the highest rushing total in 10 years. The Cougars' passing attack still isn't firing on all cylinders, but the team was able to cut down on turnovers. The football bowl subdivision is noticing how BYU players are handling the ball on the field. Quarterback Taysom Hill and defensive back Preston Hadley's are winners of the FBS Independent Players of the Week. Hadley led the defense to a shutout by recording six tackles, a sack, and a forced fumble, while Hill ran and threw for more than 100 yards, including three touchdowns. And an Aggie stampede is sweeping through the state and it's making its way to Provo. Utah State is on a roll and they're trying to add to a successful season with a win against BYU. On KUTUBE's Jake Edmonds has been studying the Aggies for us. Jake, what kind of game can we expect tonight? Well, I can tell you it's not going to be like past games where the Cougars used to crush the Aggies. I would expect Utah State to really give BYU all they can handle as they look to become the top team in the state. The Aggies are hoping to do something they haven't done since 1974, beat both BYU and Utah in the same season. They already knocked off the team on the hill, and if they can win tonight, they can rightfully claim the top spot in the state. BYU and Utah State have split the last two decisions, both winning at home. And after last season's heartbreaking loss, the Aggies return to Provo with revenge on their mind. They beat us real good two years ago, and then we had to score with 11 seconds left last year to, to beat them. So uh, we know we're going to get their best shot, and we don't. Ex and they're better this year than they have been the last two years. So um, we expect the dogfight them. The Cash Valley crew return eight starters on offense, including dual threat quarterback Chucky Keaton. He's almost 70 percent on his passes this season when he's not handing the rock to speedster running back Kerwin Williams. Offensively, a lot of weapons um, and spreading the field and obviously a mobile quarterback, good running back, nice receivers and, and a good scheme and then solid on special teams. So you play someone, but at least at first glance, I'm, I'm impressed. The Cougars are seven point favorites tonight and they will need to rely on their defense once again if they want to send the Aggies back to Logan disappointed. Now, the Aggies come into Provo with a 4-1 record, their only loss coming off of a last-second uh, last missed field goal at Wisconsin. So kickoff is at 8.15 local time, and the, the team wants fans to wear, you know, their Cougar blue, obviously. Well, yeah, and you, and you mentioned their offense. What's their defense like? 
Yeah, they actually lose their best defensive player from gradu or to graduation. His name was Bobby Wagner. Uh, but they do return a pretty good defense. They're actually one of the top 20 defenses in the country. Well, it'll be a fun one tonight then. Thanks, Jake. Yeah. And speaking of our defense, Utah State head coach Gary Anderson has Kyle Van Noy and our rock-solid D line on his mind. Tremendous team. Uh, they're very physical on defense. They're very well coached on defense. Uh, they run to the ball. They make plays. Uh, their numbers are backed up with... Uh, their performance on the field and so it'll be a tremendous challenge for our offense. He went on to say he doesn't know how he would have gotten himself back into college football without the help of Bronco Mendenhall. Years ago he spent some time bunking up in Bronco's apartment back in northern Arizona saying it was good cheap rent for the week. Riley Nelson spent the Hawaii game injured on the sidelines, but his pain is Taysom Hill's gain. Riley's health is on the upswing and he wants his spot back. Cougar Nation has been debating, but Bronco will end that debate tonight. CougTube reporter Mary Blanchard went to practice this week. Mary, who's it going to be? Well, uh, we won't know for sure until tonight after the first snap, but it looks like it'll probably be Taysom. Riley Nelson's ailing back meant that Taysom Hill got the start last week against Hawaii. But will the freshman get the call against the Aggies? Um, yeah, I think right now, I think the plan is uh, for me to, to go on Friday against Utah State. And unless something changes, then I think that's, that's what's going to happen. But that's the coach's call, not Hill's. Bronco Mendenhall says the spot is Riley Nelson's once he's feeling well enough. And Nelson says that could be as early as tonight. I mean, knock on wood, uh, definitely next week, and hopefully, and I would say there's a good chance this week. Sometimes a situation like this can cause teammate tension, but Riley and Taysom say that it's all in the family, and offensive coordinator Brandon Doman is the proud papa of two talented kids. I love him like a brother, and ever since he got here, we kind of, you know, have just kind of clicked. I think we think a lot of the same way. We approach the game the same way. We kind of approach life the same way. And I, I definitely look to Riley as a brother. I, I, um, I love the kid. You know, he's, he's been a great mentor on and off the field. Riley is uh, Riley's as good of a guy as I've been around. He's as supportive of Taysom. He wants this football team to be successful, and it has nothing to do with Riley. And he knows that he's not 100% healthy, and he knows that our football team needs a healthy quarterback right now. And so we can't say for sure whether it will be Taysom or Riley, but we do know that we'll have a healthy quarterback tonight. So Mary, we know that Riley Nelson has an emotional connection to Utah State. I mean, he played there for a year. Do you think that will be a factor in whether or not he plays tonight? I do. I think Riley has made it clear that he really wants to get in on the action tonight. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see you in a few hours. Thanks, Mary. And when KuTube returns, getting Ziggy with it. From driving to the basket to rushing the quarterback, who is Ezekiel Ansa? And hammering Hampson. The senior standout is killing it on the court, and the right people are noticing. Stay with us. For years, NFL scouts have flocked to Provo to, see, to scout Cougars with names like Jim, Steve, and Austin. Not many Ziggies in that group. Fans won't find the name Ziggy in their program tonight, but check out number 47. Skylar Hardman introduces us to the 6'6", 270-pound sensation Ezekiel Ansa. Four years ago, Ziggy Ansa was in Africa, Accra, Ghana, to be exact. After coming to the States in 2008 for school, he saw football for the first time, and he wasn't impressed. <laughs> I, never, I never wanted to do it. it was, I was like, uh, that was too intense for me. Ensa loves to compete, so after he didn't make the BYU basketball team, he turned to other sports. Ezekiel Ziggy Ensa started his athletic journey on a basketball court. Then he spent some time sprinting for BYU track and field. Finally, Ziggy found his home here on the football field. Settling in wasn't easy. The coaches had to teach him everything from how to strap on pads to basic defense. Even with his enormous frame and unquestionable strength, Coach Bronco Mendenhall thought Ziggy was a long shot to survive camp, let alone make the team. Um, whatever the position, mastery, conditioning, every single play I keep learning. He's now a mainstay on the best defense BYU has had in years. His teammates praise his work ethic, and there is even growing chatter that Ziggy belongs in the NFL. Ziggy's role has evolved from special teams player and backup to starter. Skylar Hardman, Coog Tube. 
And Ziggy is sixth on the team with 22 tackles, but the difference between him and the five guys ahead of him, he's only started one game. Each of the others have started all five. So look for Ziggy early and often tonight now that he's solidified his spot atop the depth chart. I love the name Ziggy. Athletic trainers do more than hand out water. They keep the mighty Cougars on the field playing strong. CougTube reporter Sarah Burchett takes us behind the scenes of BYU Sports Medicine. Last week, medical staff carried two players from Hawaii off the field. What happens when the injured players are our own? It's BYU. BYU football trainers stand by their players on the field, but it's their relationship off the field that can make the difference between health and an ended career. It's our job to be a third party um, that's separate from their competitive atmosphere that can say, well, this, this injury is going to affect you for a long time in your life and you need to uh, think about other things down the road other than just the game that's happening tomorrow. You need to think about when you're playing with your kids. When a player goes down on the field, trainers are the first on the scene. They decide if an athlete keeps playing or if they take a seat or even a stretcher. Trainers say the athletes respect their judgment. We have a great relationship with all of our guys here and they, they know us and they trust us. We spend a lot of time with them and they know that we're here every day for them. So. The sports medicine office has a gym, pools and one on one guidance for injured players. Coming to BYU is a whole new level. They have some great resources here. They have some excellent facilities. Almost anything and everything is available to these guys to help them be as successful as they can be. Even with several high profile injuries, trainers say this season is on track and as a whole the team is doing well. We've, we've kept our guys very healthy, we've kept them active, we've kept them playing. Um, a few guys are banged up a little bit now that we're about halfway through our season, which is to be expected, it's a pretty physical game. But for the most part, I think our guys are, are fairly healthy. The Cougars are also lucky to have Utah Valley Regional Medical Center five minutes away from the Bell Edwards Stadium. With those facilities and dedicated trainers, our student athletes are in good hands. Sean? Thanks, Sarah. And star volleyballer Jennifer Hampson is hogging the spotlight this season, earning herself West Coast Conference Co-Player of the Month honors for September. The six foot seven junior has already piled up two Player of the Week honors, as well as two invitational MVPs this season. Hampson has 147 kills in September and currently ranked 22nd in the nation in kills per. And Hampson is just one part of a dominating Lady Cougars machine. The team lost its first match of the season last weekend to St. Mary's, but bounced right back with its biggest comeback this year, climbing out of a two sets to nothing hole and beating Loyola Marymount in five sets last night. Nicole Warner had a career high 17 blocks, while Jennifer Hampson led the way with 23 kills. The volleyball team's next match will be here in Provo on Thursday against Portland. The BYU softball team led off their fall season with a pair of nail-biting victories against the colleges of Southern Idaho and Weber State. With a 2-0 Golden Eagle lead, the Cougars clawed back their way with a 9-8 walk-off win. Then against Weber, the Cougars brought in one last run in the bottom of the fourth for the 3-2 victory against the Wildcats. When CougTube comes back, soccer showdown. The Lady Cougars look to dominate the pitch as they head into West Coast Conference play. And shuffling students, the Marriott Center gets a facelift, meaning some fans have a different view this season. And prepare for, for cooler weather at the game tonight and throughout the weekend. 11 game time weather when we return. The Red Hot women's soccer team is looking to continue their climb up the poles as they open West Coast Conference play tonight. Kudu reporter Royce Hinton is at Southfield, where BYU will face off in its eighth home game of the season in just a few hours. Sean, the Lady Cougars are on a three-game shutout streak and are hoping to extend that tonight. Now, the bleachers beside me may look empty right now, but that will be sure to change when the two teams take the field. Watch out for sixth-ranked BYU tonight when they take on the number 21 Broncos of Santa Clara. Winning against three ranked opponents so far this year, the Cougars are no stranger to the task at hand. That gives us a huge momentum and it gave us a lot of confidence too because we like believe in ourselves. Not that we didn't before, but it just gave us that extra edge. The Lady Cougs are on a nine game winning streak with their only loss coming against in-state rival Utah. A game of bittersweet memories for at least one teammate. We kind of moved on, moved from that and you know, we're a different team from that game, I think. Um, it taught us a lot, a little humbling losing to Utah, um, and I think it taught us a lot. Learning from that loss seems to be paying off, especially in front of the home fans. 
With attendance nearing 5,000 people per game, Southfield now hosts some of the largest crowds in the nation. On the road, it's harder because people are cheering against you. And so it's nice to be at BYU and at home in Southfield. There's just something different about it. So it's really nice, and I like it a lot. BYU is looking for win number 12 tonight, and with the right amount of energy in the stands, they just might be able to find it. At Southfield, Royce Hinton, Coog Tube. And it's a 6 o'clock start, so plenty of time to get over to the football game afterwards. Thanks, Royce. And the awards just keep on coming for our number six BYU women's soccer team. The West Coast Conference named senior Jessica Ringwood player of the month for September. The forward netted two goals against then number six Penn State and, the court and currently shares the lead with the teammates with five goals. Ringwood says it's a huge honor not just for herself but for the team. Looking at our weather outside right now, it's a bit cloudy, um, but we're starting to see fall um, more around us. With the leaves turning uh, orange, red, all, um, all these things, the, we're starting to see fall and we're starting to feel it as well, especially with these temperatures. This last week it's been cooler and today it's cooler as well. Uh, currently it's f at 56 degrees, and so, but we're going to see as the day progresses that it's going to go up into the 60s. So not too cold, uh, but not too hot as well. Still a great day to enjoy the outdoors. Winds will just be blowing between 5 and 10 miles per hour. Um, but, it, but looking into tonight, it's going to, we're going to have a dramatic drop from the 60s all the way down to the 50s, uh, just in time for the game at 8 p.m. Uh, at Lavelle, Lavelle Outer Stadium. Uh, the sun is, uh, is going to set around 7 o'clock, so just before the game is going to start. Uh, as the game progresses, it's going to drop even further down from 52 degrees all the way down into the 40s and maybe even the upper 30s. Humidity is at 48% and winds uh, just a slight breeze. Statewide. Uh, temperatures have, have dropped statewide, even down in St. George, where no longer in the 90s, down into the 80s now. Uh, and into, uh, up, in, up north in the 60s, so just overall, the temperatures are slowly starting to drop, and they're just, but all, all today, though, all over the state, mostly cloudy skies, um, but also sunny as well. And looking more specifically at northern Utah, um, today, just partly cloudy, like we said, and over the weekend, sunny, so it will be nice. But looking into next week, it, we're, we're going to go all the way up into the 70s, uh, with, but with lows down in the 40s. The 70s won't last, though. It should um, get down into the 60s uh, by late next week. In southern Utah, uh, just sunny skies in the 80s. Um, but, like I said, uh, to the, game's, the game tonight looks good. Back to you. Thanks, Matt. When CoogTube returns, find out what shade of blue we all pick in predictions for tonight's game. And sweet seating. Some co lucky Cougar f Hoops fans will get the lazy boy treatment. Find out when... We're not even halfway through the football season, but it won't be too long before basketballs are bouncing at the Marriott Center. CoogTube reporter Brittany Good shows us who's going to be sitting where after some big changes. The benches are out and 2,100 new blue cushion seats are in. The Marriott Center will hold 1,800 fewer screaming fans this season, but the center's directors admit this facelift was long overdue. The university decided that it was just time to make changes. The benches were 40 years old. Uh, there were some safety concerns to the benches and then also just to uh, help keep the Marriott Center more up to modern standards. That means wider seats and more legroom for ticket holders, but where does that leave the sixth man? This season, instead of cheering from center court, the students will be playing a different position, getting loud closer to the visitors bench and behind the West Hoop. With the student section, it was so unified, but now we're pushing them away. We're putting the season ticker holders who aren't as energetic as us. They do love the game, but we're the ones that bring the energy to the games. Many longtime Cougar fans are accustomed to the students being front and center. We're BYU, and we've always sat there, and I've seen that my whole life. And so with them moving it to the corner, it's just, it's kind of put a knife through my heart. But Durfee says there are benefits. I think the students, if they give it a chance, will enjoy being behind the basket. They're going to be in very close proximity to the visiting bench, and so they'll be able to maybe give them a hard time and do that kind of thing. And I, I think that it'll just be the same environment that it's been before. The seating switch up sets sail on opening night, October 26th. At the Marriott Center, Brittany Good, CoogTube. And our hoopsters can rock out in the locker room after rocking out on the court. The renovation also includes a brand new sound system. 
All right, it's time for everyone's favorite part of the show, predictions. Sean and I got trashed in our predictions last week when we pitched Mich Michigan State to beat Ohio, but that didn't happen. But we came out winners when the Cougs dominated Hawaii. This week we're predicting tonight's game against Utah State and BYU and the SEC battle between LSU and Florida. Sean, let's start with you. What do you got? I'm very confident in my prediction, but I'm going to go BYU tonight. And then with the SEC battle, I've got to go LSU over Florida in the swamp. Fair. Um, for me, those Aggies and LSU. Um, let's see, Brady Tucker, BYU TV sports reporter, predicting with us. Brady, who do you have winning? You know, I got Utah State tonight, and uh, I got Florida making the minor upset over LSU. All right, and Matt, who do you got winning? Uh, BYU, I think BYU will take it tonight, and I choose LSU. Mm, man, I don't know. I can't do LSU. You know, it's in the swamp. Florida has 17 restart, starting players returning from last season, and they are ready for revenge after their loss last year to LSU. Yeah, but at the same time, we talk about BYU's defense being really good. One of the few defenses that's better than BYU this year is LSU. LSU has been dominant on the defensive side of the ball, and Florida's offense hasn't been that impressive, so I don't see them yeah, being able to move the ball. Yeah, but their running back is doing great things. Their running back is doing great things for the offense, so, yeah, Mike you know, Gillisley, bounce out. Mike Gillisley is getting six yards of carry almost, mm -hmm. and their offense of line is phenomenal. I don't think LSU, plus it's probably more about LSU than it is about Florida. Yeah. They look sloppy against Towson. They look sloppy against Auburn. They just they just look like slop this year. I think Florida's got them. LSU hasn't looked so good this uh, this season, but I think they've just been playing down to the level of the other teams have been playing, and I think this will be a good opportunity for them to show how good they are. All right, well, yeah, and, and let's be frank, yeah. because neither team has played any bit of any note. I mean, mm -hmm. you look at it, LSU has played Washington and Auburn, and then I mean, Florida's only played Texas A&M and Tennessee, so no, well, neither of them have played any good teams. All right, I like that. But let's talk about the game tonight. BYU, Utah State, Brady, what is your problem? You didn't pick our Cougars. Uh, you know, I just I can't, I can't see it happening. I feel mm -hmm. like Utah State's going to need some aggressive play calling, and, it, and it's going to happen. Last year, they caught us off guard with an 80-yard play on the first, first uh, play from scrimmage. Mm. It's just it's going to get ugly for the Cougars, I think, yeah. that A good defense is going to be a good offense, I think. Yeah, no, no, I've got to agree with that. I think our defense is our just defense. too good, and we'll score just enough to be able to pull it off. I don't Their think it'll be a blowout. Their running back is good, but not good enough. That's true. All right. No, definitely. Yeah. Well, that's CoogTube for Friday, October 5th. And if you want to check out all of our stories we did today or share them with your friends, check out the CoogTube section on our website, 11news.byu.edu. Thanks for joining us, and have a great afternoon. Go Cougars. Go Cougars. <laughs> Programming on 11 is made possible by viewers like you.